<laughs> okay, that's one way you understand it. Um, a bit more, a bit more abstract. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, so it's first of all, it's a relation, right? Meaning there's a, a pair x, y. On top of that, um, you only allow to assign for a, one x for every y. Remember, one x for every y, right? So that means what? x cannot be repeated. Can y be repeated? Yeah, right, it's fine. Yeah. Um, now, today we're going to uh, talk about properties of function. But before we go to function, I want to review something. It's not going to be on the exam, this first slide right here, but you, you got to understand what that means. Um, first of all, set. What is a set? Have you guys heard about set? Like set theory? A uh, pretty simple set. It's just a, simply a collection of elements, it's just a bunch of objects. And when math, uh, mathematicians write set, we use curly bracket. So for example, this one right here is a set of for the script and me. The set of start from one, two, three, four, five, six. If I ask my son, he say that's a set of counting number, right? So natural number count. So we count one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, it doesn't have to be number all the time. It could be like colors, right? So for example, you don't have to write this down. Um, a set A is say blue, red, oh, red, red, yellow, things like that. Um, green, one more. And a set of, could be anything. Each of them is called element. Um, union of a set mean when I have two things that unite it, mean the set gonna get bigger. So that list of element in both set A and set B. Right? So for example, if I have set A is five, seven, 10, 15, and then set B, um, four, eight, 10, 11, 15, then A union B will be what? Both of them. Right, both of them, same thing, marriage couple. Right? You're married, they join account. So hopefully, money join together, right? Um, so it's get bigger. <clears throat> so what, what do I go from the smallest to largest? I got what? Four, five, seven, eight, ten. You don't have to write ten twice. Ten, eleven, and fifteen. Let me move it to the left a little bit. Right now, space. So that's A union B, right? Every everything. Now A in the section B, your set's gonna shrink, get smaller. That means you only pick the element that in both A and B. Right? So so I'm gonna use the same example. Let me uh, duplicate this here because I don't feel like rewriting it. So. Someone tell me what's A in section B. We didn't know what the upside down U. What's a common number between the two sets? 10. Yeah, 10, 15, that's it. So union, your set get larger. In the section, you get your set shrink. So far, so good. By the way, this is, um, Statistic. Have you guys, have you anybody take that course? Yeah. <laughs> With Jeff. Yes. Uh, my major, actually, my, my, my major is statistics. I'm not supposed to teach math, but they short in master uh, instruct, instructor. So uh, I'm covering it, but I, I prefer to see statistics. So that's what I, my grad school for. Um, <clears throat> all right. The so sum different products and quotient of function. Given all that, I have a function f and a function g, two functions. I'm going to call, I'm going to denote domain of f as a and domain of g is b, respectively. Then I can have, I can add two functions together. I can subtract two functions together. I can multiply two functions together. And the domain of f and g, when you combine them, is going to be a intersection. 
So um, in the textbook or on your exam, this is what I wrote. But if I ask you which one you like better, the left hand side or the right hand side, which one you like better? The way it's the same thing. S plus G of S is equal F of X plus G of S. So which which style of writing you like better? The second one, right? This is more intuitive. This is I take function F add to function G, subtract and multiply whatnot. Um, the first one a bit more abstract, but on the exam, I'll give you this. Because I, I suggest that you rewrite it like this. It is more intuitive. <clears throat> now, um, the last one, the division one, it's a little bit more. On top of the, the domain has to be in a section between the domain of F and domain of G, there's one more. The bottom cannot be zero. So the division is the, the TLC. You gotta take care of the denominator as well. All right, so that's theory. So let's jump to them some problem. Um, by the way, the way I write my exam is very similar to how I present on lecture. So on the exam, you see something like this, it's probably just like this, the style. It's just like this. I list out the question and you answer. Um, let's find the domain of G first. You should be able to tell me what's the domain of G, all of you. Domain, domain, not the function. Domain mean what? Means some some values that when you plug in, it makes sense. It doesn't make the function go any far. So what's the domain of, of G? It could be one. <laughs> Can I take two? Yeah. I'm not solving for G. I'm not solving G. I'm talking about domain. What value can I plug in? The function is okay. All of them, right? It's the linear. It's go it, it with uh, wise, it's go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So everything. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think one is I showed you the graph. You really to get it. Um, what about A? I'm sorry, what about, yeah, what about A? You can graph it if you want. You can graph it. You can graph your calculator. So let's graph it. Let's I have it already because I taught the class this morning. Um, am I sharing my screen? Oh, I'm not sharing. Mm. We'll graph it together. I cleared that out. So square so root is going to be second and x squared. So you're supposed to hit second first. Second, x squared. x minus one, so x right here. x, t, theta, n. x minus one, bless you. And then you hit graph. If anything, you can choose zoom six. Um, Yours should show the tick mark, my doesn't. We're well, gonna be one here. So it's go from one to, to infinity, yeah? Do I include one? Can I include one? I know that it started one, but can I include one? Yes, right? Um, if, if you doubt yourself, you plug it in. You can plug it in. If you plug one for, one minus one is zero. Can I take the square root of zero? You need to calculate it. You doubt yourself again, right? Yes, yeah, square root of zero is zero. So one to infinity. Now I need to find the domain of A in a section B. So what do you think? If you doubt yourself, you can always draw it out. So I'm drawing two lines for two uh, domains there. The first one, I'm going from one 
to infinity. The second one, I'm going all the way. So what's A in a section B? What are you going to start point in an end point? Yeah, when you need it. In a section, right? You're gonna choose the common area. This will stop others from sharing. Do you want to continue? What does it mean? Somebody try to share your screen with? Oh no, it's just me here. Uh, maybe I, and you know what? That is my, I touched something here. Let's do that. But still sharing is good. <clears throat> Again, when you include some value, make sure you use bracket. Okay. All right, we 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 take care of the domain, um, and I'll tell you why we have to do that. But but before that, let's do let's um let's finish the properties of, of f and g. So f plus g of x. Again, I recommend you rewrite it at f of x plus g of x. f of x is square root of x squared. I'm sorry, yeah, square root of x minus one. Um, g of x is three x plus one. There's nothing I can do, so just leave it like that. The second one is f minus g of x. So I will write it as f of x minus g of x. Tell me is it right or wrong? On the exam, maybe you do you panic, you divide, you know, try to catch up with the math. So you write like that, right or wrong? Hmm? Yeah, if you write like that, you better have a parenthesis around it. I don't have to. Mm -hmm. Okay. You gotta try the last two. I'll walk around see how you do. Watch out for the bottom. All right, so F um, is square root of X minus one times G. Make sure you put parentheses because 
the square root of x minus one is considered one term. At least we talk about a like function f. Like if I ask you how many terms function f has, you say one term. Right? How many terms? How many terms does square root of x minus one have? You say two terms. But but in terms of function, is one term, right? So I think I'm okay like this. If you want, you can distribute. I'm gonna distribute this one to this one, and this one to this one. So I'm gonna move the three x to the front first, okay? And then plus one times square root of x minus one is still simply just x minus one. One times. I'll take both answer. Um, it's not necessary to distribute, but to show you the math, how it's done. F divided by G. <clears throat> no. Well, the last one. Is there anything else I can do in terms of like algebra, algebraic three? Speaking. Simplify. Yeah. Simplify. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's you're done. You're done. Uh, the only thing I have to watch out for is what? Remember, I said the last one was special compared to the other plus three. You cannot allow the denominator to be equal to zero. Right? So, so what, what else you have to do? You have to, to write like this. Uh, the x plus one cannot be equal to zero. It's implied. X cannot be equal to subtract one divided by three. Negative third, right? Um, the, the thing is, you're kind of lucky. Because in the beginning, you chose your domain to be from where to where? One to infinity, right? Where's negative one third? Well, negative one third is on the left of one. I'm just gonna say right here. So it's, it's kind of already out of the domain. Part kind of not necessary, but, but it's a good habit. You always watch out for the denominator. It's not always like that. It's not always like, Outside the domain, sometimes is some sometimes is hypothetically just hypothetically okay. Um, don't write this down. So x equal three, and three is right here. That means the domain of f divided by g is what? No, no, no. I know that I can uh, can take from one to three. On top of that, I cannot take three. So the domain, the, the new domain. But we're lucky because negative one third is on the left of one, so it was never inside <laughs> anyway. But it's good to write like that. Yes. Hmm? I don't know what they do. I don't know what they want. <laughs> because I don't know what they want. You can just try that. That's why I give you a three tries. Uh, yeah, I, for me, on the exam, it's okay. I think it's safe. If I was you, it's safe. But you're not comfortable with distribute. Like, you're not confident. Like, how do I distribute it? By the first one, so what happens? Well, you should be able to. You guys are one, two, two, one. All right. For the rest of um, from here until Friday, all application. I'm sorry, but this is a uh, business and economic class, kinda. Uh, so you're gonna see, I have a lot of application. So Paul Puritron, did I say it right? Puritron. Uh, a manufacturer. Manufacturer of water filters, so they do water filters, has a monthly fixed cost of 10,000. So every month, regardless of how many filters they go through, it pays a fixed cost of 10,000. It's kind of like membership. Um, and a variable cost, depending on how many filters they, they make, they do, they pay extra. For, so for one filter, you plug in one for X, for two filters, you plug in two for X, etc. 
Uh, so it's basically 10,000 to 16 plus this function, 10 minus 15. Where x denotes the number of projects and then it's of one. They want you to find the function C, which is give the total monthly cost incurred by the manufacturer of X filter. So C of X is the cost function. C of X. Um, it's the cost function. Can someone tell me what my cost will be? Or at least the company's cost based on information is given. Well, well, what's the fixed cost? 10 grand, right? So every month you gotta pay 10 grand. Um, even though it's COVID is closed down, you don't do anything, you still have to pay 10 grand. I know it sucks. Uh, that's what happened to a restaurant during COVID. The mall closed, everywhere else closed, but they still have to pay rent. Uh, all right um plus plus the variable cost so every single filter you you do this is how much you pay so plus negative 0 0.001 x square plus 10x fixed cost and variable cost and um they uh, require that the number of filter is between zero and forty thousand filters I don't know why. It could be the machine, that's how much machine can take per month. <clears throat> um, if I was you, I'll rewrite this in descending order. So I'll start with x squared. <clears throat> and that would be my cost function. So far, so good. Does anybody here take business or economic like major? Okay. What uh, math? Any math? Statistic major? Nurse? Nurse? <laughs> this, um, what do you guys do? What about the rest? <laughs> so a few people, huh? For business. Okay. Marketing like accounting, stuff like that. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, you're in the right class. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on. So that's part A. Now part B, given the revenue function. By the way, um, people, business people, can you tell me what is the revenue is? Just to clarify the terminology. What revenue? It's like the money you bring in before expenses. Very good, very good. How much you make? before the, the cost, right? How much you make before the cost? So the revenue function given to you is how much the company make before tax, before cost and, you know, pay for employee and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> now I have the cost. I have how much I make. I want to find my profit. Common sense. How do you do it? Yeah, because, well, so I know how much it costs. I know how much I'm bringing in. So I want to find my profit. What do I do? It's common sense. Say you own a restaurant. I think the, the revenue you minus the cost, right? I know how much I make. So the profit function, I, de I denoted P of X. P of profits. <clears throat> it's going to be a revenue function, how much I bring in, minus the cost. So that will be negative point oh 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 five x squared plus twenty x subtract. Make sure you put parentheses around those minus point oh 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 one x squared. Sub here, right here, plus ten x plus ten grand. <clears throat> uh, simplify. I got a five, I got a one, so it's 0.004. Well, minus 0.004. 0.004 x squared 
20x minus 10x will be 10x, and then minus 10,000. This will be my profits function. Do you guys see this in your business class or economic class? This kind of problem? I'm sure you do. <clears throat> what is the profit when the level of production is 10,000 filter per month? What do I do? What do I do? Hmm? Plug it in, right? Plug it in 10,000 for us. By the way, this 10,000 on the bottom is not the $10,000 fixed for the top. It's just the same number, but it's different. It's 10,000 filters. The other one is 10,000 bread. Or, or, yeah, or 10 bread. Um, it happens to be the same. So P of 10,000 filters is equal minus 0.0004. 10,000 square plus 10 times 10,000 again. Plus the 10,000, minus the 10,000 money here. Use your calculator to do this. I'm gonna show you um, a little trick. It may be not seem like very helpful here, but um, when you have something like this, for example, and clear that out. Clear, let's shoot. Let's shoot. Square. Um, I'm going to use a function store, S T O store. So, for example, we have something like this. So I, I want to know what the square root of three minus, don't, don't do this, minus the square root of two. Well, you don't want to remember that and then repunch it, right? For the next line. So what you do is you can store it. All you do is just press the STO, the third one from the bottom left. And then I'm going to pick the letters. You can pick anything you want. You can pick X. Somebody else can pick A, so you have to be alpha or math. But just pick X, it's just easy. Right there, it's stored. And now if I don't want to call X, you see call X, tell you I'm, I'm, I'm this number. So let's do that. I'm going to store what 10,000? That's 10,000. STO for X. Now X is 10,000. All I had to do is plug in my function. So negative point. Oh, 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 oh. Too many O. 4X squared plus 10X. And then plus uh, minus 10,000, so minus X. 50,000. Does it help? You have to do like 10,000 all every time. So 50,000. Make sure you put your unit, which is dollar size. Do you have any question up to this point? No. All right. Um, let me entertain you a little bit before we go to a composition. Uh, so last summer, I took my family to Henry Ford Museum. Has anyone been there? Before? Yeah. Some some call it Greenfield Village. Well, the two part. There's a well, actually the three parts, right? There's the museum, there's the Greenfield Village, and there's a factory. Um, it probably take you more than one day to visit all three. Probably take like three days so if you really have to just sit down and you know, read the thing. Uh, anyway, we one day we we visit the Henry Ford Museum and the Greenfield Village. Um, <clears throat> let me show you what I see inside the Greenfield Village. I want to see you show you this. Um, See, I have a, so this is a picture of my son in front of the Allegheny mo locomotive is big. Can someone guess how, how much is weight, how heavy this thing is? Make a guess. Good guess, very good. 
little bit lower, a little bit lower though. <laughs> you come on. That's a lot. <laughs> that was a good guess. You come on one hundred to two hundred. That's a lot different. Not below one hundred. Huh? Fifty is close. More than 50, more than 50. 60, bingo, 60, uh, you can write this down. 60 tons, well, roughly 60 tons, um, just monstrous. So right here, let me see if I can make it bigger. Six, well, 600, my bad, 600 tons. No, you're right, I, I remember wrong. You're right, yeah, 600 tons, my bad, my bad. Um, but the point is heavy, it's really heavy. Um, they use it to, uh, let's see, what I say, they do. They trans transport um, soldier, wounded soldier, prisoners of war, troop, hauling uh, like food and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I think one of the company in Ohio make this. But again, it's, it's run by um, steam. So coal, right? You put coal in, put boil in the water. That's why they call it a locomotive. Still, I imagine how much, how much coal they have to store to run this like bad boy. Um, on top of that, they have a new thing. I don't know you've seen this. When's the last time you've been there? Fourth grade. <laughs> like that. Uh, this is new. Math the mathematic exhibit. This is new. When they started it, um, we had a chance to take a, a, a peek behind the scene before they actually displayed it. Um, but now they do. Now they display it. And it's pretty cool. I have some cool stuff in here. Uh, so this is conic section. You guys some familiar with conic section, right? Like cones and parabola, uh, ellipse, hyperbola, those kind of thing. Um, can someone tell me what this is? What? Have you guys watched the adventure? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what the Tony started talking about, <laughs> which I have no idea what he's talking about, but it, it's the same thing that he talks about. It's a Mobius script. Um, if you put, if you start a point here and you draw, then you go back to the same point. In the future, I'm going to show you how to make a Mobius script. Everybody can do it. It's pretty easy. And I'll, um, and I'll ask you to draw a line. You're gonna go back to the same line. It's, it's actually one side. It look look to 2D, but it's actually one side. It's pretty cool. I have no idea who that is. Just uh, Mobius band, that's the normal curve. That's for stats. For example, if I collect all the everybody height in this class, you probably have a normal curve, right? So a lot of people have the similar height, except for the very short people or very tall people. Right? But most people have similar height-ish. Me, Bluefield Village. Right. It's a pretty cool place. Um, by the way, I have, I have no stake in this place. It's just, it's just cool. I just want to tell you, that's all. All right, not too bad. Have a chance, visit, visit the place. It could be a nephew, your niece, whatever, family. All right, Composi um, composition of function. Basically, a function inside a function. Have you guys seen, uh, anybody have a Russian doll collection? Can you open a big one and there's a little one? That's what it is. Think of a big one as G, the small one as F. So you put a little one into a big one. Same thing with composition function. You put one function inside another function, right? Um, so if I had F of G of X, is read at G composite F of X. Another way of writing this is G, and little circle, I mean composite, f of x. I don't know about you, but I like this one, most intuitive, friendly, friendly user. Uh, this one a bit more abstract, but, but you're gonna see most especially. I mean, yeah, I don't know if you just go to translate to Russian. Yeah, that's what you translate to other style. Um, <clears throat> the domain of uh, the com composite function is this. Oh, it should be an F here, not D. So, so be before I explain the domain, let me uh, let me talk about. Let me let me show you by picture. I have two machine 
f and g. That's your, my function, right? Um, I have a little x, an arbitrary number, any number at all. What I'm going to do, I'm going to in, input x into machine f. Now I have what? Now I have what? What inside the circle? I have f of x, right? I have f of x. If, if x is a number, what is f of x? It's also a number, right? You just plug it in and you just get another number, that's all. Once I have f of x, I'm gonna, I'm gonna solve f of x into g. Now I got what? What do I have at the end? Yeah, g of f of x, that's what it is. Again, it's just another number. The way we, because it's algebra, we use letter to display number, right? It looks fancy, but it's basically just another number. Let me, um, oh, and, and, and the domain. Um, what is the domain of f? Look here, you put x, right? It's x. The domain of G is the function of X. Let's take a look at the example. I want you to find F composite of G of negative one. If I was you, I'll write it like this. I like that. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to do from inside out. First, I'm going to calculate g of negative one first. G of negative one. So function g look like this. By the way, I'm going to be right f outside. I'm going to work from inside. So g look like two minus something square. And that something will be negative one. Negative one square is one. Two minus one is one. So now I got f of one. By the way, it's come from here. What do I do with that one? Plug into F. F is three times something minus five. And that something is one, negative two. Do you guys try B on your own? Yeah. Anyone got the answer? No, no, just no, just watch it. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> you gotta get your hand dirty. <laughs> it's hard to do things in your head. Mm -hmm. B, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. I don't know the answer, but negative. We got we got negative eleven. What else? Anybody have a different answer? Hmm? Negative eight. Anyone else? I don't know the answer, so it could be anything. Uh, all right, it's the answer. Uh, so f of negative one. Again, rewrite this. Maybe I'll make the negative one into black so that. We write the outside function. Now I'm gonna plug in negative one for f. Right. So three times something minus five. And that something is negative one. Negative three, negative five, negative eight. So you gotta write on the first one. 
So f of negative eight though, you're not done there. Yeah, f of negative eight. And then what do you do with a negative eight? Yeah, put it back in the f again. Push it back at the end. Negative 24, negative five, negative 29. No, let's do this one. Let's see what the last one is, though. Yeah, let's do this one. You try this one. By the way, I don't have office hours today. I'm helping a college cover in her class. Let's do this one. And the last one I wanted to get together. Um, <clears throat> all right, F composite of G of three. Rewrite this will be F of G of three. One more parenthesis. So F of, let's see, G is X squared minus four. Three squared, which is nine minus four is five. So F of five. five, um, plug in five for F. So I got one over so square root of five. Am I done here? What should I do next? Very good, right? You gotta rationalize this. On the exam, you do five, six, take a point off maybe. Um, Cause you have to be taught to rationalize this. So um, I don't want square root in the bottom. So I'm gonna multiply both top and bottom by root five. So basically at times by one, I didn't change. So the top I have root five, the bottom I got five. <clears throat> yes. Hmm? Which part, um, are you talking about this? Oh. Yeah, so you plug into X. So you replace the X with five. Yeah. G composite F of X. Now it's no longer a number. <clears throat> so first, first, first thing first, we write it like the way we do it. So G of F of X, right? What's F of X? Yeah, so G of um, one over square root of X. Just do one step at a time, even though you don't know how to plug it in. I still give you a point, just, just show you the step that you know. Uh, and now you plug it in. It, it, I call it blob. I call it blob. So usually we have little X here, right? But now no longer, I mean the whole blob function. So uh, if you eyeball G, Put this away. Block square minus four. So I'm replacing the x with the block. Right? So instead of x square, it's going to be block square. 
just lob is one over a square of x. What is square of one over a square of x? Yeah, one over x minus four. I don't like it like that. I don't like it. It's just got hanging the negative four hanging there at the end. Um, let's 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 do the LCD. So what should I times to the negative four? By the way, this is negative four over one, right? So how do I combine the negative four with the previous times top and bottom by? No, by one, what kind of one? Yeah, x over x. x over x is one, right? Um, now you have a same denominator. You can uh, combine the top. So the, the denominator is just x. And then you've got one minus four x. Okay, now for last slide, I want you to get together in group, pick your own group. Um, I'm gonna give you, what time are we done? 47? 47. So get, get together for like 10 minutes, okay? And then after that, we discuss, and then we'll be done. Yes. Oh, so yes, one yeah. minus. Okay, I see it now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I just You're got good. mixed up. That's okay. You want to speak out loud? Yeah. Because when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's why. Yeah. It's not just the multiplication. Yeah. Can you get together? Introduce yourself and do the last slide.